Hi everyone! Welcome to this tutorial on how to knit the My Favorite Baby Blanket Pattern, which is a DeHart House Designs pattern based off of the uh, Grandmother's Favorite Dishcloth pattern that I've been knitting for years and has been around on the internet for years and probably well before that. Uh, but what I've done is taken that general pattern and blown it up into a baby blanket. And this tutorial video is going to take you through all the steps of that pattern. That pattern is available for free as a free download on Ravelry. The link is down below in the description box. Feel free to go snatch a copy for yourself and follow along with this tutorial. So let's get into it with materials, uh, tips, and uh, the tutorial where I show you in video format how to work through this pattern. Let's go. So the very basic supplies needed and all that I use for this pattern uh, include a US size 7 uh, circular needle and I go with the circular uh, because of the long cable it's going to help accommodate that very long diagonal of the blanket which is the longest part of the blanket so I can hold a lot of stitches on here and be easier for me to hold easier on my wrists um, US size 7 is also four and a half millimeters um, for the size and a tape measure is really handy uh, so we can tell where uh, we need to stop increasing and start decreasing so to measure the edge of the blanket. I am going to be using inches, uh, but you can easily convert this to centimeters. And then your yarn. So I'm using two cakes of Mandala. This is Lion Brand Mandala. I've got two different labels here, but they're the same um, yarn. So I'm going to be using, this color is, uh, where does it say the color? Ah, Cupid is this color, and I do like on the label it does give you a preview of the colors here. Even though you can see them in the cake, it's still nice to see them lined up here because you also get an idea of how wide these stripes are. So I'm using Cupid, and this one uh, is sort of a muted rainbow. Uh, this one is Valkyrie. And you can see both of these skeins are 150 grams, uh, 590 yards. Uh, this is not worsted weight as much as I thought it was. It's um, it's rated as a three, a light yarn, uh, which is like a sport weight or DK. Um, oh yeah, here it is over here. So it is a, a sport weight or DK weight yarn, not worsted, but. Uh, because this pattern is not based on, um, it's knit until you get a certain size, right? So um, you could really adapt this for any weight of yarn, worsted weight, fingering, um, and just you'd have to adjust your yardage according to that. Uh, this is 100% acrylic yarn. I like to use 100% acrylic yarn, especially for uh, baby items because. Uh, babies are messy and don't know how to, uh, you know, stay clean and not spit up on everything or whatnot. So it's, I like 100% acrylic because it can easily be thrown in the washing machine and the dryer and uh, this is going to hold up. Uh, it's going to hold up its size, its shape. If anything, it's going to get a little bit softer over time. Uh, but having uh, a baby item that's easy to wash is really important in my book. Uh, and I am not a mother, uh, but I am an aunt, and I've been around many children, and I know that being able to wash um, their items uh, is a real uh, big perk. So I'm using 100% acrylic for that reason, just because it makes life easier for whoever's gonna get this blanket. <laughs> so we're going to get started.
All right, so I'm going to use a long tail cast on. Uh, and I like to use a long tail cast on because I think it looks clean, it makes a nice edge. Even though this isn't a whole edge, it's just the corner, I still think it looks really clean. And also, it counts as your first row of knitting. So, it's actually making stitches as we put it on there. So I'm gonna have a tail of about a foot, 12 inches-ish. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to do a long tail cast on. I like to use the twisted German cast on. It's just what I use. I haven't memorized. I don't even have to think about it. Uh, but I'm going to hold the yarn over the needle with my pointer finger, my right hand. And I'm going to go under these two strands uh, on my thumb, catch the inside of this loop, pull it under, go to the other side, catch this strand coming over my pointer finger and then it creates this little triangle. I'm going to pull the tip of the needle through there and then pull these strands taut. And I'm just going to repeat that. So I'll go under both, catch the inside loop, pull it under, go over, catch the inside loop, pull it through, and then tighten up the two legs. And what's really nice is we're only casting on four stitches. So this is one of the reasons I love knitting corner to corner blankets. Why I love this pattern is because the cast on is extremely short. <laughs> and usually when knitting blankets, I find that I have to cast on hundreds of stitches and it just makes the project um, difficult to start. But there's a lot of setup. So here there's very little setup, four stitches finish. Now this counts as the first row. So what I'm going to do is the setup row in this color as well. So I need to make sure I have my working yarn that's attached to the ball and that I'm not knitting with the tail. So I have one of those pet peeves where I, I dislike when the yarn comes through the loop, when it gets caught in this loop. So I like to make sure that it's over. <laughs> It's just one of those quirks I have. Okay, so what I'm going to do is knit, and I'm gonna pull on that tail to tighten up that first stitch a bit. It's less awkward. I'm going to knit two stitches, yarn over, knit two stitches. Okay, first setup row finished. Now, that's two rows in Cupid, so I need to bring in my second color. So let me find the end of this. There we go. I like to work the cakes from the outside in just because uh, if I work it from the inside out, once all this middle is gone, the outside bit tends to get really tangled. So I like to pull them from the outside in. Now if I really wanted the stripes to go the other way, I would pull it from the center. Totally. So. You know, choose choose that order based on how you want the colors to, to fall and play with each other. Okay, so now in my second color, I am going to work a pattern round. So before I start this, let me say every time we get to the yarn over, every single row there's going to be yarn over, uh, we are going to knit that yarn over through the back loop because what that will do is twist this stitch and make it act like a knit stitch and it will close up that hole so it will not leave a space. Usually a yarn over will leave a space uh, which is really nice in lace work to get those spaces uh, but I don't want those spaces on the edge of the baby blanket. So what I'm going to do is knit. Again this first stitch is awkward so I'm going to pull on that Strand, tighten it up a bit. And then knit two. Yarn over. I'm already at the yarn over, so I'm going to knit it through the back loop. And then knit the last two. Okay. Turn my work. 
yard management. Okay. So I'm going to knit two. Try to get closer. Knit two. Yarn over. Knit until you get to that yarn over, which I'm there now. Knit it through the back loop. And then knit those last two stitches. And so what we're going to do, hang on, let me manage my yarn here. Okay, so what we're going to do is repeat that pattern row every single row. So every single row, we are increasing one stitch. That's what the yarn over is doing, is adding one stitch to every row. Now, when we come across and knit that, if we knit it through the back loop, it will close it up and not leave this space, okay? So what I'm going to do now is, since I did two rows back and forth in Valkyrie, my second color, I'm gonna come back to the first color, so. I'm going to grab this pink here, my first color. Again, with these first few rows here, make sure that you do have your working yarn that's attached to the ball, not the tail. Uh, so I'm going to knit two stitches, one, two, yarn over, knit until you get to the yarn over, and then you're going to knit that yarn over through the back loop. See how it twists it and makes it look kind of like a knit stitch? That's what's closing up that space. And then you knit those last two stitches. Turn your work and do it again. Knit two. Knit until you get to the yarn over. Knit that yarn over through the back loop. Knit those last two stitches. Turn your work. And then you'll switch colors again. So what I'm doing is alternating every row, sorry, every two rows, <laughs> is a different color. So it's gonna make these stripes in the garter. On the reverse side, they're gonna be kind of alternating stripes with these pearl bumps. It's gonna look a little more blended. So depending on the effect you're going for, whether you want stripes or something a little more blended, both sides of this blanket are going to be nice to look at. So I'm just gonna keep going in this fashion until uh, this is large enough so you're gonna see that here very soon so I've gone through one color change already where this uh, this light pink has turned into white here on the um, cupid color and now this one uh, what's this color called again uh, Valkyrie yeah Valkyrie is gonna turn from this grayish color into this seafoam green. And I find the color changes to be quite magical and really fun. And part of what drives me through knitting these blankets is I get excited for the color changes in this self-striping yarn. So I just wanted to take a quick video of knitting through the color change and how it, um, how fun it can be.
there we have it. No more gray. Now it's going to be the seafoam green. So we'll have the green and white for a little bit. And then it looks like I will definitely run out of white before green. <laughs> uh, and then it will go into this nice, um, like a fuchsia color and then transitioning back down to the light pink, which is awesome. This is going to be one of the cutest blankets. Uh, but yeah, I just find the color changes really, really fun. So for tip number two, um, the beginning of a row here when you're changing colors. So I just finished with the green, gray transitioning into green, um, and now I'm going to do a white stripe. Um, that first stitch is really loose because it's attached to the working yarn on a different ball. So for tip number two, what I do is I wanna tighten up that first stitch so it's not all loosey-goosey because I want a clean edge on my blanket. I don't want super loose stitches here at the end that are going to get snagged on baby fingers or or car seat buckles or, or whatever, right? I don't want really loose stitches on the edge. I want a clean edge. So what I do is, so the white is my working yarn for this stripe. And so what I'll do is, when I put my uh, right hand needle in here, is I'll give that first stitch a tug, right? And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll actually wrap it around my finger and keep it taut while I knit the first couple of stitches. So I'll bring my working yarn through and I'll give it another tug because it's going to loosen up a little bit as I knit. And so it just keeps it snug enough that it's not going to be falling off my needle. And I can get that first stitch in the white to have good tension. So that's a tip when you're switching colors, that first stitch in the row is going to be loose. So hold that other working yarn in either the same hand or the other hand. I use the other hand for my working yarn um, and just give it a little tug. Don't crank on it, right? But just a tug to snug it up on the needle um, and that'll give you a nice uh, clean edge along the blanket as well. So the blanket has made it to the desired width across my corner to corner. So I have the corner where I cast on over here and you can see the edge of the blanket along here and my live stitches still on the needle. That's the diagonal of the blanket, the center. So I've knit this to be three feet across. So I have a little tape measure here. I think I got this at the dollar store. I love the dollar store. But if I measure this across, it is in fact, there we go. yep, three feet across. But remember, you can really make this any size that you want. Um, first thing to keep in mind though is how much yarn you have, okay? because you need to be able to make it to that other corner, all right? So I wasn't sure if I was gonna get three feet because I actually have, um, this Valkyrie skein is actually a little bit light. So I was weighing it to make sure I only used half of it for half the blanket. Um, Cause I need to make sure I have half left for the second side, right? So. It can be a little bit tricky to lay this so that the side is flat. So you can see what I've done is uh, this table's a little short of three feet wide. I think it's 34 inches across. 36 inches is three feet. Um, so I have it on a diagonal here, but um, I straighten out the corner where I cast on and I work hard to straighten out this edge. I push these stitches back and let them bunch up on the other end. What you want to do is give it the slack over here so that this edge can lay flat for a little bit as well. That's going to straighten out this corner for you. Um, so I know it can be tricky to measure, but 
if you can find a nice flat surface, a uh, table, the floor is sometimes what I end up using. <laughs> Um, this, this is not a terrible way, but also you can go by how much yarn you have if you don't have a certain size in mind. But I have a certain size and I got there. <laughs> so now that I have reached the middle, uh, I'm going to stop working the increase round and I'm going to start working the decrease round. There is no middle, you just go straight from increasing to decreasing. So this is the longest row right here going down the middle of the blanket. So here what we're going to do is with our decrease row is we're going to be decreasing by one stitch every row. We were increasing by one stitch, now we're going to decrease by one stitch. It's going to give us those same proportions on the other side. All right. So I like to hold um, I guess I could call this tip number three. <laughs> um, when working with two balls of yarn, I like to keep them on opposite sides. And oftentimes I'm knitting on the couch or in a chair in the living room. And so what I'll do is I'll set each ball um, next to my legs, one next to my left leg, one next to my right leg. And I try to keep them the same. So I've been keeping Cupid on my left and Valkyrie on my right. And it just helps me keep the strands from getting all twisted. So every time I turn back to the stripe side, I make sure that they're not twisted. And it just um, keeps my sanity because when the yarn gets all tangled, it frustrates me. So this helps me manage that. Um, okay, so I worked uh, the last round in yellow, so I'm going to switch back to pink. and. Like I said, these are rather long rows. In fact, the longest rows of the blanket right here. I dare you to count your stitches. <laughs> no, I don't because I don't want to know how many I'm knitting actually. So what we're going to do on the decrease round is we're going to knit the first stitch. So we're going to knit the first stitch, then knit two together. So that decreases one. Yarn over increases one, which puts us back to the same stitch count. Okay. So I decreased one, increased one. Those cancel each other out. So I'm going to decrease one more. So I'm going to knit two together. Here. So I've decreased two and increased one. All right, so then I'm just going to knit across the rest of the row. Again, when I get to the end, I'm going to knit the yarn over through the back loop. So if you were keeping the yarn overs to give you that little eyelet edge, you're still going to get those yarn overs and you can continue that eyelet edge if that is what you prefer. Um, if you're knitting it as the pattern is written, where we close up those eyelet holes, um, that is still going to happen. So I'm going to knit across this row to the end and show you what the end of the row looks like. Okay, so I'm close to the end of the row. So just like before, we're going to knit until you get to the yarn over. Knit the yarn over through the back loop. Knit those last two stitches and turn. And then we will just repeat that row. And we will repeat that row until pretty much the end, right? So again, we're decreasing. So I'm going to knit one stitch, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and then knit until you get to the yarn over, knit that yarn over through the back loop, and knit those last two stitches. 
So each row will decrease by one stitch. All right, so I'm almost finished with the blanket. I'm finishing up the last corner here and I'm down to, I think I have seven stitches here. Two, four, six, seven, seven stitches. And I just wanted to show you the end here with the corner because I'm still wanting to knit the yarn over through the back loop. But when I get down to this few of stitches, uh, it gets a little tricky to do that because it's going to start being a part of one of those knit two togethers. So let me just show you. I'm down to seven stitches here and I'm going to knit another decrease row. So I'm going to knit one, knit two together, yarn over, and see this knit two together is going to involve this yarn over. So what I'm going to do is slip this stitch for right now and I'm going to slip the yarn over through the back loop. So instead of slipping it this way, which would keep its orientation, I'm going to slip it through the back loop so that it twists the stitch for me. And I'm going to slip those two back onto my left needle. and then I can knit two together. So I'm still having a yarn over here, uh, but now I can knit these two stitches together. And it's like knitting that yarn over through the back loop. I knit the last two here. So I'm going to do that again. Now I'm down to six stitches. one, knit two together, and you can see the yarn over is right there. So I'm going to slip it through the back loop onto my right needle. Now keeping the orientation we've just made, slip it back to the left needle. So you can see now it's twisted, which is what I want. So now I can yarn over, knit two together. And now I'm at five stitches, which means I'm almost finished. We're going to take this down to four stitches, just like where we started. So I'm going to knit one stitch, knit two together, but look, one of them is a yarn over. I'm going to do this again. Slip that first stitch out of the way. Slip the yarn over through the back loop. Then put those two back on the left needle. Now I can knit these two together. Yarn over, knit these two together. And now I have four stitches. So the last row here is the bind off. So I'm going to knit my yarn over is right here, so I'll knit it through the back loop. Pass that first stitch over. Knit, pass that stitch over. Knit, pass that stitch over. And that's it. All I have to do is cut my yarn. We'll find my scissors first so I can cut my yarn. And pull it 
through the loop. Try to tighten that up a little bit. There we go. And then I'll cut the previous color as well. So I like to leave my ends a little longer than six inches just because it makes it easier for me to work with. But I will weave these in on the back side and trim the ends, give this a nice little soak, and the blanket's finished. But yeah, those little, the yarn overs are a little fiddly at the end, but if you just slip them through the back loop, then it, it does the twisting for you, so it makes the, the two togethers a little easier.